up and welcome to another bike review out of Apple Yards in Keithley. Apple Yards here, a premier dealership in West Yorkshire. Plenty of stock, both new and used, from all the mainstream manufacturers. Get yourself down here. Now then, uh, from time to time, a bike comes along which sort of defines an era and is so widely anticipated that uh, it merits a second visit. So today, I'll be taking out for the second time, the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. And let's talk about its place in the modern motorcycle market. OK, let's crack on. And, uh, here she is yet again, the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. Here in uh, Astral Blue. Beautiful looking bike, a work of art I would say. So uh, let's climb aboard again and reflect upon what this bike is actually all about. Okay, so ignition on. And there you can see analog speedo and uh, an LCD central display with a clock gear position indicator, hurrah, uh, odometer and uh, trip meter there, fuel gauge around the uh, top and to the right there you can see the Royal Enfield Tripper navigation device which works with the Royal Enfield app and in my experience works a lot better with iPhones than it does with Android but might not be the same for you off we go, familiar rumble from that uh, air and oil cooled 650 parallel twin. Okay then, so uh, why a second test ride of the Super Meteor 650? Well I've been thinking a lot about this bike and the, the position that it occupies uh, generally in the pantheon of uh, modern classic motorcycles and uh, more broadly um, across the uh, mid-weight uh, motorcycle um, category if you like and uh, if I think back certain bikes and certain classes of, uh, of bikes have defined an era really and uh, you know, back in the 80s and, uh, and 90s, it was uh, it was the Japanese sports bikes, wasn't it, that sort of defined that area, that uh, pardon me, that era, from a, a motorcycling point of view. And then, uh, going from the 90s into the uh, sort of uh, early noughties, with the uh, big bruising touring motorcycles, and of course the. Uh, the slightly earlier genesis of the ubiquitous adventure bike um, started by uh, started by BMW and uh, and then shamelessly copied of course by uh, most of the other mainstream manufacturers but I think when we come to look back at the uh, second decade of the 21st century I think it'll be all about the uh, genesis of the Royal Enfield modern classic motorcycle uh, and particularly as expressed in bikes based on this the 650 parallel twin engine platform and the J-series single cylinder 350 uh, platform and uh, no doubt uh, others yet to emerge so I think these bikes define an era. Of course, um, this engine uh, first uh, first appeared in the uh, the Interceptor and the uh, Continental GT, and uh, it should come as no surprise, really. I suppose that now it, it emerges in a in a midweight cruiser. But where next? We ask ourselves. Well, if you look back, you might just see my. Uh, my video from a couple of weeks back um, on the uh, recently released and widely circulated spy shots of a uh, putative 
650 classic version of this bike and uh, it may well be but that is the next iteration sporting this this fantastic engine and this is a really strong engine now okay we can talk about the numbers 47 brake horsepower 57 newton meters of torque and that horsepower uh, that comes in at uh, 7250 rpm and the but the torque kicks in at um, 5650 rpm so it's uh, mapped for uh, uh, tractability in the mid-range so we can talk about this engine but it is a hugely over engineered um, unit because um, you may well be aware that certainly for the Interceptor and Continental GT and therefore by logical extension to this bike because it's the same engine uh, this engine can be safely uh, bored out to 850cc in fact you can get a, a kit that's available from the likes of uh, I think Tech Bike Parts and Hitchcock's motorcycles that will enable you to do that which will obviously significantly increases its performance both in terms of uh, power and torque so we're talking about an engine that will uh, safely withstand having uh, another uh, uh, 200 cc's of capacity milled out of it so that's a strong engine, that's an over-engineered over 650 motor. So whether or not uh, future uh, iterations of uh, Royal Enfields, uh, modern classically styled or otherwise, will sport that engine with uh, a bigger bore, a bigger capacity, uh, remains to be seen, but uh, the potential is there. So. Uh, logic would tend to suggest that Royal Enfield in developing this 650 parallel twin and deliberately surely not accidentally over engineering it always perhaps had it in their mind that uh, they might want to uh, increase its capacity at some point in the future and that'd be quite interesting not that this engine is short of power in terms of real world everyday usable power it's got plenty now I've said previously I'm I'm not a big uh, I'm not a big cruiser fanboy and uh, I'm certainly not a big midweight cruiser fanboy. I tend to think that cruisers should be big hefty thousand cc plus Harley Davidson types. But that's just a a, a a personal idiosyncrasy. I couldn't begin to uh, justify it uh, on an illogical basis. Uh, but I'm not and. Uh, Although I'm very comfortable with this uh, forward riding position now, <laughs> my only reservations about forward riding positions is for me, for some reason, I look an absolute muppet. Um, <laughs> sort of sat like a praying mantis. I was six foot one with a 32, 33 inch uh, inseam. So I'm by no means, no means a, a shorty. And uh, <laughs> I tend to look a bit like a... Uh, uh, a praying mantis on ecstasy when I'm sat on a cruiser but that is my only reservation it's a terribly terribly vain uh, reservation to have uh, but you've got to look right on a bike haven't you but uh, this um, this bike midweight cruiser though it may be really does appeal to me and uh, the one I would want, I've just asked Kieran back there about availability, the one that I would want would be the uh, touring version of this bike with the uh, engine bars, the spotlights, the, uh, the hard panniers and the screen and uh, they come in a couple of colours don't they? Um, I think it's, uh, so this is astral blue so I think the touring version comes in uh, a red and a blue uh, celestial blue and celestial red if I remember correctly beautiful fueling from this engine absolutely no issues with uh, uh, low speed manoeuvring in traffic and handles like a dream but so comfortable I was out on my Pan-European for the first time in a while yesterday and the uh, 
the amount of power that's available on top there is quite intoxicating because uh, for a few weeks all I've been riding really is my classic 350 and my Interceptor 650 uh, love them both to bits <laughs> then when you get on something like a Pan-European with a 1300cc V4 engine <laughs> under its belt and uh, wow what an experience and uh, I'll be doing a video shortly uh, on the uh, ST13 uh, Pan-European I'll be claiming that it's probably the best heavyweight touring motorcycle uh, ever to grace our shores but uh, that's yet to come But yeah, so a bike that defines an era, really. Uh, retro style, but a cruiser. I've got an incredible personality, and the fit and finish is uh, certainly a step up on the fit and finish of, say, the Interceptor and the uh, Continental GT, and uh, they were pretty good, to be fair. Um, but with the addition of these uh, metal um, uh, switch casings on the handlebars, and... Uh, uh, certainly uh, a better quality looking uh, instrument display up front uh, this from the uh, uh, from the well from but uh, the same as the um, Hunter 350 and the Scram 411 right okay then so this engine's uh, nicely running now so uh, let's see what the performance is like It's a lot more than you'd think, you know. <laughs> I tell you what, if you did bore this out to 850cc, it'd be an absolute flame machine. But really, more than enough power on tap here to thoroughly entertain you. And that's what it's all about, the riding experience, isn't it? The engagement with the ride itself. Man or woman and machine in perfect harmony. And that's how I sum this bike up, really. It's almost as if the bike uh, itself is uh, able to uh, intuitively uh, assess your, uh, your emotional needs when you're riding. That's what it feels like. And a glorious sound, uh, even from that, uh, that stock exhaust. And the handling on the bends is absolutely sublime. I always tend to think that um, that cruisers with their uh, long uh, wheelbase, uh, and this is, you know, it's got it's over 1.5 meters is the wheelbase on this bike. You tend to think of them as uh, not being uh, particularly sharp on the turning, but um, the uh, the handling uh, on this bike uh, blows that theory out of the water completely. It's excellent. The more I look at this bike, the more it, um, the more it impacts as a, as a, um, a piece of design artistry. It just somebody's actually sat down and conceived of how this bike will finally look, and uh, a stroke of genius, if you ask me. Because uh, for a midweight cruiser, I do not think there's a better looking bike anywhere to be had, and under seven grand for this one. I don't think there's much competition out there. I hear you all shout Honda, CMX Rebel or whatever. But uh, I'd uh, have to disagree on that point. I just think the aesthetics on this bike are absolutely peerless. Right, okay, just do some quick numbers then. So we've got a 19-inch front wheel, a cast alloy uh, front wheel tubeless tyres, SEAT tyres and we've uh, got 320 millimeter front disc there with the ABS as you can see the ABS ring there uh, that 320 millimeter disc sports a vibrate two piston caliper the uh, suspension is uh, as you can probably see inverted forks there and have a look at the top shower so uh, 
bit of a, a big hitter sure when it comes to suspension so uh, yeah 43 millimeter inverted forks um, with 120 millimeters of travel at the front so working our way back then there you see the forward foot controls uh, and uh, that uh, glorious 650cc single overhead cam parallel twin air and oil cooled engine putting out just under 47 brake horsepower which makes it UK A2 license compliant and putting out around 57 Newton meters of torque um, the uh, the power coming in at um, the peak power coming in at 7,250 rpm and the peak torque at 5,650 rpm. And uh, looking at the forward foot controls here, I do spy here potentially the opportunity to move this lot back to there, unless that's for something else. Hmm. What do you think? Um, put your comments below. I wonder if that would give you the option of, uh, of standard foot controls because it seems to be in exactly the right position now that would interest me but it may be another pointer to the arrival of a classic 650 mm, just a thought uh, the exhaust there you can see a fairly mahusive chromed exhaust um, actually um, uh, very well designed in terms of uh, how it uh, maps onto the bike there uh, I'm sure that uh, aftermarket variants will uh, will become available uh, but I have to say that the sound out of the exhaust for a stock exhaust is uh, very entertaining indeed and of course it has a partner at the other side so it's a, a two into two exhaust system so at the back of the bike well suspension we've got um, two um, shock absorbers uh, both adjustable for preload and uh, the back wheel is 17 inch again cast alloy tubeless with Seat Cruise tyres a Seat an Indian uh, brand um, double sided uh, swing arm there and uh, the uh, brake arrangement there is a 300 millimeters which is pretty big for a for a back wheel 300 millimeter disc sporting a twin pot bibre caliper there and uh, pretty keen that back brake it has to be said but as i always say with royal enfields and if you get one or if you already have one you probably know about this is that uh, uh, to get the most out of the braking system uh, you need to adopt the old school approach of applying both brakes proportionately uh, to get to get the most out of them and uh, uh, fairly uh, standard lighting setup there not not LED but uh, well in character with the overall design of the bike uh, fairly reasonable uh, passenger seat there of course on the uh, touring spec model you get a backrest as well and it's a bit bigger but perfectly adequate there if you want to carry a pillion um, chain drive of course as you can see there you do get a centre stand as standard which uh, you do pretty much with uh, all of these Royal Enfields and uh, that's a, with any chain drive bike of course that's, uh, that's uh, a great thing to have and uh, what else can we say about this bike then we should talk about the fit and finish or we'll first of all we'll talk about the seat height it's uh, 740 millimeters so nice and low for anybody that's a bit vertically challenged and the uh, fuel tank is 15.5 liters and you should be getting uh, 65 to 70 miles per gallon out of this bike depending on how you ride it so 200 mile tank range should be eminently achievable Overall fit and finish though I have to say is excellent, certainly a step up from the original um, Royal Enfield Interceptor and Continental GT although in fairness the newer models of those bikes do have this upgraded switch gear very similar to the, uh, to the classic um, 350 um, <coughs> but it has these um, cast metal shrouds for the, uh, for the switch gear. Um, which have a much more premium look about them 
we have the span adjustable brake and clutch levers which is nice to see because they ain't adjustable on the uh, on the classic and the interceptor right then so let's talk about seat height 740 millimeter seat height on this bike nice and low as you can see i'm flat footed with uh, a good bend in the knee still uh, quite a heavy bike this for a, a, a mid-size motorcycle 245 kilograms so quite hefty but feels as if that weight is carried reasonably low down so this is me i'm six foot one 32 33 inside leg that's how i look seated upon the bike and i just think i look so ungainly on uh, on cruiser motorcycles but really really comfortable it has to be said and uh, i'm very pleased i bought this out for a second ride because second time around and having reviewed such a lot of bikes since i first took this bike out from apple yards um quite a few um aspects um of its uh, of its um overall personality of uh have presented themselves a little bit more clearly and uh, I'd be very happy to have one of these frankly and the only reason it's a bit like Uncle Stu really isn't it the only reason that I'm not sort of thinking do I chop in the Interceptor and the Classic for a Super Meteor is the, the possibility that, um, that a Classic 650 might be coming down the line hmm there's a thought um, but yeah, all day comfortable riding position, very, very peppy engine, no issues with uh, with performance at all, it, would, uh, it wouldn't fail to impress you. A2 compliant and, uh, you know, if you're, if you're riding A2 and, uh, you know, you've just passed your test and you're used to riding uh, learner motorcycles, small capacity motorcycles, when you get on this, you'll think you've jumped onto a rocket ship, let me tell you, because there's bags and bags of power on tap and uh, delivered in a very uh, very linear predictable safe way uh, so a lovely looking lovely feeling bike uh, and as i said earlier i think this motorcycle will be one of the handful from royal enfield that define an age really sort of from uh, 2017 2018 onwards uh, with the with the arrival of the interceptor uh, and then on the back of that uh, the interceptor and the continental gt which strictly speaking came first of course in terms of concept uh, on the back of that then uh, the the, uh, the classic 350 uh, and now this and uh, if there is indeed to be a classic 650 and it's shall we say built to the same standard same fit and finish and same aesthetic appeal as this bike it's going to be a cracker and it will fly off the shelves and i would dare to suggest that it will create more of a more of a stir uh, than uh, than this bike but uh, i think you know this bike in uh, in its Torah form would really really tempt me I mean what more could you want if you like your classically oriented in motorcycles if you like that vibe that takes you back to the sort of 50s and 60s of British motorcycling then uh, this has got to be right up there under seven thousand pound no real major competition and I know there'll be comments saying what about this bike what about that um, but I don't think um, that uh, the, the obvious contenders, if you like, are serious competition for this bike, not at all. It's an absolute beauty. And the colour's growing on me. I quite like blue. I think I prefer the interstellar green. So if we talk about the colours then, this, the standard model comes in five uh, colour schemes. Um, there are three that are called astral. So astral blue, astral black and astral green. Uh, and then there are two called interstellar and that would be the interstellar grey and the interstellar green i do like the interstellar green and then when you get up to the uh, the, the torah versions uh, they're in celestial red and celestial blue and a beautiful bike mm, love it
So in short then, this is an awful lot of fun for sub £7,000 and uh, in terms of value for money measured against uh, riding reward there aren't many bikes that deliver the way that this uh, Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650 delivers and I know people are gonna bang on about the uh, the highly affordable Honda Hornet as the uh, market leader in affordable mid-weight motorcycles but if you want a really boring really ugly uninspiring bike then go get on the Hornet me I'd rather have some fun on something like this because I feel well and truly where I need to be on a bike like this yeah, and I just think these Royal Enfields are getting better and better and better and as long as they're able to keep the uh, price point more or less where it is then uh, they'll just go from strength to strength, there's absolutely no two ways about it. I mean, this is a tried and trusted engine now, it's been around since what, late uh, 2017, 2018 with the Interceptor and uh, I'm not aware of there having been any issues whatsoever over that five year period or more. So a tried and trusted engine, bags of real willpower, over engineered, um, providing for plenty of opportunity to enhance the performance should you wish to do so. And uh, a really well put together, um, tune from solid rock feel about it and uh, you could just cruise all day like this really really comfortable and uh, plenty of uh, real wheel power as I've said um, you know sometimes you could be forgiven um, never mind never mind cruiser what about cruise missile if you, uh, if you really uh, work the engine, you can get some stonking performance out of it. Um, the bike will do over 100, <coughs> excuse me, 100 miles an hour, if you can find anywhere legal to do that, of course. So, uh, yeah, how much more power do you want? But it's got such a personality, this bike. It's got a huge personality. Got plenty of rock and roll from the engine. It's uh, got plenty of curb appeal. It could be a garage queen, but that'd be a tremendous, uh, tremendous waste. And all in all, when you look at the capital outlay for a bike like this and the running costs, which uh, in terms of um, insurance and maintenance and uh, miles per gallon, and all the rest of it should be very, very reasonable indeed. So yeah, an absolutely fantastic bike. I'm, uh, I'm glad I came out for it, uh, came out on it for a second time. It just allows me really to confirm my original impressions that uh, it really is an absolutely stonking bike. This, and if you like your modern classics and you like your cruisers, or you don't mind getting into cruisers this is going to tick all your boxes and then some August bank holiday we should see a proliferation of Harley Davidsons for the Harley Davidson rally it's probably an appropriate point at which to sign off and thank you for watching Thank you again to Apple Yards and in particular to Kieran for the loan of this bike. If you want to test ride this Super Meteor, it is Apple Yards demo bike. Get yourself down to Apple Yards in Keithley and take out this bike. Yeah, so um Hope that was of some interest to you. If it was, please click a like, please click a subscribe, please share this video. 
and uh, until the next time ride safe uh, be kind and i'll catch you again soon toodle pip Woohoo!